Welcome to Primary YPWW, Lesson 13. This is the audio form only. I do not own the rights to this music. The topic is Bethel, Blessing and Birthright. The lesson scripture is coming out of Isaiah chapter 43, verses 1 through 3, 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 3 through 10, and 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 3 through 4, and then verses 10 through 11. Please have your Bibles ready. The memory verse says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled, and that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you. The target for today's lesson. The Lord wants his children to know that a true relationship with God seals the believer's blessing and birthright. Our lesson scripture, beginning at Isaiah 43, verses 1 through 3. But now, thus saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed thee. I have called thee by thy name, thou art mine. When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee, and through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned, neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. For I am the Lord thy God, the Holy One of Israel, thy Savior. I gave Egypt for thy ransom, Ethiopia and Seba for thee. 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 3-10 through 10. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled, and that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you, who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time, wherein ye greatly rejoice, Though now for a season, if need be, ye are in heaviness through manifold temptations, that the trial of your faith, being much more precious than of gold, that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ, whom having not seen, ye love, in whom though now ye see him not, yet believing, ye rejoice with joy, unspeakable and full of glory, receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your souls, of which salvation the prophets have inquired and searched diligently, who prophesied of the grace that should come unto you. Now let's look at Second Peter chapter 1, verses 3 and 4, and then verses 10 and 11. According as his divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness, through the knowledge of him that hath called us to glory and virtue, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Now let's look at verses 10 and 11. Wherefore the rather, brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. For if ye do these things, ye shall never fall. For so an entrance shall be ministered unto you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The introduction says, God created Jacob. He knew him. He formed him into the man he became. But before he had truly received his blessing and birthright, he had to change. He became known as Israel. The old man, or the former character, Jacob took advantage of his brother Esau, tricked his father, stole the blessing, and was sent away from home. The new man renewed godly character, Israel, 
repented, worshiped God, and became a faithful leader. Getting his blessing and birthright were directly connected to his encounters and obedience to God. Jacob, uh, as known as Israel, became a man of faith, but he had many hard events and decisions before getting there. God told his mother, Rebekah, what would happen concerning her twins. You will give birth to two nations. They shall be divided. One shall be stronger and the younger shall lead. Jacob obtained the birthright and blessings. He obeyed his father, leaving home to marry. Esau rebelled and profaned his father. He married a Hittite woman. God kept his promise. He allowed Israel to have the inheritance. Getting the birthright meant three important things. Jacob was head of the family. He received a double portion of his father's property. He received the promised spiritual blessing. God gave to Abraham. He became the ancestor from which Christ would be born. Esau forfeited all of that by rejecting it. The prophet Isaiah reminded us that it was God who redeemed Jacob and gave him a new name. It was God who was with him and protected him. It was God who blessed and gave the birthright. Peter added that God's grace and mercy made us heirs to the promise through Jesus. Heaven was the birthright of the righteous, and every promise of God would be our blessing. This included resurrection and eternal life. He gave us an incorruptible inheritance. These precious promises were the birthright for all born into God's royal family. Peter added, make certain that you stay with God and the promise is guaranteed. The questions for today's lesson are, Question one, what did God tell Rebecca concerning her unborn twins? Question two, heaven is the birthright for whom? And how do you become a joint heir with Jesus Christ? Number three, with whom are believers joint heirs? And what is the birthright of every born again believer? Happy studying. God bless you and thank you for joining me today.